Hey everyone, this is Tim Jeanette with the Meeple Core Podcast. I'm here with Rob Doherty of White Wizard Games. Hey, how you doing? And you've got a pretty sweet game here. What is this? This is Sorcerer. So this is our newest release. Um, and Sorcerer kind of melds a strategy card game with a tabletop uh, war game with like battling and dice rolling and card slinging all in one game. Um, at the beginning of the game of Sorcerer, each player creates their Sorcerer by choosing one of the four character decks combining it with one of the four lineage decks and one of the four domain decks. So, for example, you might choose uh, this character deck, this lineage deck, and this domain deck. Then you take the cover cards off, um, and those will give you special abilities you'll be able to, to use in whichever battlefield you place your avatar standee. Um, and there are three different battlefields in the games. So you can just place that guy in one of those. And the rest of these cards get put together and shuffled up, and that makes your deck for the game. Uh, and your deck goes right over here on your player board. Now, these guys, in addition to giving you special abilities, they will give you your character's true name. So in this case, you're playing Arispees, the demonologist, of the Forgotten Temple. That's, um, that's awesome. And there's 64 different possible sorcerers that you could build out of the base set alone, and then as you add expansions, of course that number uh, jumps up dramatically. Um, and um, each character will have a unique deck that combines these different uh, pools together, um, and a unique set of abilities that you'll be able to use that game. Uh, the game of Sorcerer is broken up into two primary phases. There's the action phase and the battle phase. During the action phase, players will go back and forth spending actions. When you spend an action, you just slide this little red bead down on the uh, action track, and then you do one of these little thing, one of the things here listed under the action phase. You can use an action to channel energy. When you channel energy, you're gonna move this little blue bead up two spaces uh, on the energy track. You can use an action to meditate. When you meditate, you draw two cards off of your deck and you put them into your hand. Um, you can use an action to cast a spell. Every card in your deck is gonna have a uh, cost in the upper left-hand uh, corner of the card. Um, so, for example, this costs one, this costs two, that costs five. Um, gotcha. And so if I were to play a spell, I would just move my action counter down. i choose what I wanted to play. So let's say I chose this big demon to play, and he costs five energy. I would lower my energy by five, bringing it down to three. And then I would pick one of these three battlefields to play him in. Whichever battlefield I play him in, that's where he's going to be fighting, and that's where his special abilities would work. Um, so, for example, this guy puts two flame counters on each enemy minion. That's not every enemy anywhere in the game. It's every enemy minion here in uh, here in Whitechapel, so in this part of the city. Um, so basically, these three battlefields are each distinct areas which you are going to be vying for control over. Um, you can also use an action to activate a power. So some cards, like your character skill card, will say on them, action, colon, do some cool thing. In order to do that cool thing, you spend your action and you say, I'm gonna do this, read the text, and do what it says. Uh, and finally, you can spend an action to reinforce. You can move guys from one battlefield to another. So let's say you're in trouble um, over here in Old London. Um, you could spend an action to move this uh, this guy over one space into this, uh, into this other battlefield. So you'll be moving your pieces around during in the course of the game as well. Um, and players go back and forth spending action, so you're, you do something, your opponent does something, you do something, your opponent does something, back and forth until you both used up all your actions, and then you move on to the battle phase. Uh, I'll set up a quick example of a battle. So during the battle phase, players are gonna go back and forth um, attacking with their minions. Um, so for example, um, in this battle, this player might uh, choose to attack first with their big demon here, and it has an attack value of five. So that means uh, they're gonna roll five dice on the attack. Blanks are misses, um, stars are, uh, are critical hits, skulls are hits, and double skulls are two hits. So if, for example, uh, that was the roll. There'd be one critical hit and one, two, three, four regular hits. 
the attacking player chooses where critical hit damage goes. You can put damage on the battlefield or you can put damage on enemy minions. So they may, for example, choose to put the one damage on, uh, on this little demon here and it has a shield value of one. So that's called your essence. And when you have damage counters equal to your essence, you die. So this guy would go to its owner's discard pile, and if something dies before it gets a chance to attack, it just doesn't get to attack. Then there'd be four points of regular damage, which have to be assigned. Now the defending player gets to decide where the regular damage goes. So they could choose to put it all on the battlefield, or they could put some of it on the battlefield and some of it on their minions, however they wanted to break it up. So in this case, three to the battlefield and one to the minion. Then the other player gets to choose any one of their minions to attack with. They turn it sideways and they roll. In this case, we got three dice coming in and uh, you got two critical hits and a regular damage here. So they could choose to potentially kill this minion before it attacks, put damage on the battlefield, damage that big guy wherever they want the damage to go. And they go back and forth making those attacks uh, until all the minions in that area have gone. If you can get your opponent's side of the battlefield up to 12 points of damage, you flip the battlefield over to the ruined side of the city and you put a control marker on the side of the player who won. If you can win two out of the three battlefields, you've won the game. So the goal of the game is to win two out of these three. Now, you can control your luck a little bit in the game. If you make an attack roll and you don't like some of the results on your dice, you can spend these omen counters. So these, you get one at the beginning of the, of the turn, and every time you play a card with an omen under its cost, you'll gain an omen counter. You can save them as long as you want, and you can spend them uh, one to reroll an individual die. You can do that as many times as you like, and then pass to the opponent. Then they can, if they want, spend their omens to force you to reroll any dice that they don't like the results on. Oh, nice. <laughs> Back and forth until both players pass and then the damage is final. Um, there's one more way you can control your luck in the game. This big counter here is the fate counter. The player who's taking the first action for the turn gets this, and it in each round it'll pass to a new player. Um, this can be turned upside down to the empty side to force an entire set of dice to be rerolled. You can't pick and choose which dice you, if you use this, the entire set of all. dice. So you'd pick up the whole set and roll them again. So that can be a very powerful effect, but it's uh, it's only it's only one use. Um, and whether or not you use this, at the end of the round, this will pass over to the next player and it'll be full when it's passed. Um, so, um, so there's the action phase, battle phase, and then you uh, reset, uh, uh, then you go to the uh, ready phase, reset all your cards, and you're ready to go into the next turn. This seems fantastic. I'm very excited about it. And I love the artwork and the aesthetic. Yeah, the, uh, the, our artists and graphic designers did such amazing work on the game. It's got a really rich flavor. It's uh, got this uh, fantasy horror theme, so you're playing evil sorcerers, summoning all kinds of terrible monsters, battling for control of the city. Um, and, uh, yeah, the artwork's gorgeous. The production quality is super high. It's a really beautiful game. Well, Cole, thank you very much. When's it available? Uh, it is available in stores on June 20th, and then we've got uh, some expansion packs coming out with new characters, lineages, and domains on August 20th. Nice. Well, thank you very much. That is Sorcerer. Thank you.